A you happy? Know thing on where you can sing? The auto tune on? I can. I think you have it enabled or something. No. I just sound naturally amazing. Thanks for noticing. Gotta hop up mm. here. Mm -hmm. If it was enabled, I'd sound like this all the time. Nothing. I'm in Yay. love with a stripper. Ooh, I'm in love with a stripper. She's winding, she's grinding. That's all the words I know. T pain. <laughs> I've been using the Go XLR for about a week now, and I feel that I have a pretty good grasp of its features. This entire video was recorded with my Audio Technica AT2035 XLR condenser mic plugged in to the Go XLR. Now, I am not an audiophile or sound engineer, so I won't be diving deep into what all the settings mean, but I will do my best to explain them in layman's terms. I have streamed with several different pieces of audio equipment over the past couple of years, and I can say that without a doubt, the Go XLR is the most complete package I have seen. It has voice effects, audio channel routing, sound sample pads, a nice equalizer and mic settings, and you can make it look as sleek or as gaudy as you want with all of the RGB coloring. So once you get your Go XLR plugged in, get your mic plugged in and get it set up and installed on your computer, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is get your mic working. For this, you'll go into the system tab in the Go XLR software and click on mic setup. If you have a condenser mic, selecting the condenser setting will enable the phantom power required to run the mic. If you have a dynamic mic, select dynamic. You want to adjust the gain so that when you are talking into your mic, your equalizer ends up in the green or middle area. If you have too much gain, your mic will be too sensitive and it will pick up even the smallest of background sounds. And if you have too little gain, you will have to put the mic right up to your mouth in order for it to register your voice. Next, we will move on to the mic tab in the software. The first option you see is the equalizer. You can adjust the bass or treble to make your voice sound uh, a little more bassy, a little deeper, or a little lighter, maybe a little friendlier. Um, I recommend that you don't go too far in either direction with these as it can make your voice sound dull or flat. If you wanna fine tune your voice equalizer, click on the right carrot and you can adjust each frequency individually. Now, as I said before, I'm not an audiophile. I don't know enough to really go into detail about which parts of these voice, these frequencies are going to uh, going to modify. But if you get bored one day or you know what you're doing, feel free to uh, fiddle around with that and you can really set it to uh, the perfect equalization for your voice. So the next section we're gonna move to is the compressor. The compressor section is pretty important. This is essentially a way to equalize the volume of your mic across quiet and loud times. The more compression you have, the more equal your volume will sound. So if you're talking normally and then you yell or you get excited, something loud happens in your house, whatever it is, you won't peak your mic and you won't blow out your listeners or your viewers ears. Um, this also helps if you are want to have your mic further away from your mouth, it will help to keep the volume consistent if you lean into your mic or if you have it farther away. Um, it'll just really even out the total volume of your voice. Um, you'll need to play around with the threshold a bit to find the spot that works for you, um, but I use negative 19 decibels. Um, for the ratio, 4 to 1 or 3.2 to 1 is pretty standard and will work in most cases. Um, I recommend starting with those and then fiddling around with the other ones if you feel you need to. You want to set the attack low, around 2 milliseconds, so that the compression kicks on quickly when it needs to. Um, I set my release higher, up around 170 milliseconds, so that the compression effect will be on long enough to cover any loudness that occurs. The last thing you can modify in this section is makeup gain. Um, and it's pretty self-explanatory. It's literally just adds more gain to make the overall mic louder during the compression phase. So if you have your compression set too high, your voice could sound a little muffled or low, you can add makeup gain to it to make your voice boost up a little bit during those phases. Um, I have mine set at zero, but many use around five decibels. I don't recommend going much higher than that um, because it will make your voice sound uh, kind of odd and, and just very loud when it doesn't need to. Um, one of the most important settings areas in the mic setup is the noise gate. 
This is how you can block out background noise in your room, such as keyboard clicking, people talking in other rooms, fans blowing, um, anything you have in the background, really. If you have a condenser mic, you'll probably need to set a higher threshold since condenser mics are a little more sensitive to background noise when compared to dynamic mics. Um, I have mine set to negative 26 decibels. This is something you'll have to fiddle around with to find the perfect fit for your environment because everybody's environment is gonna have different levels of background noise. Um, the attack though should be relatively low. I have mine at 20 milliseconds. Uh, the release is around 150 to 250 milliseconds and I settled at 200 for mine. Um, that just basically means um, how quickly the, the gate kicks on and how quickly the gate releases. Uh, you want a quick attack and a slower release similar to the compressor settings. The last thing you can adjust in this mic tab is the de -esser. The de -esser will literally reduce the harshness of the S sounds when you speak. If you put this too high, it'll kind of muffle your words that start with S's. I have mine at 50, which I believe is the default, but kind of mess around with it and find the one that works for you. I don't really have very harsh S sounds, I don't think, um, so I left mine pretty standard. Now, I'm not going to get too much into the other features of the Go XLR, of the software, um, the mixer, the, the sound effects, the sample pad, things like that. Um, there's plenty of information out there, but this should give you a good starting point um, to get your mic set up to where you can actually start using it uh, to record videos, record voice, uh, to stream with. And then the rest of it's really not too complicated to figure out. And, and it's really just kind of a thing that you have to sit down and play with. There's a lot of very cool voice effects you can do um, from demonic stuff to uh um you can hard tune like t-pain and then just just all sorts of fun stuff that you can do uh with that and i can do another video on the effects later but that's another uh 10 15 minute video of, of itself the effects are very intricate in this um same the sample pad is is pretty fun to mess with it's more of an on the fly thing um i haven't saved any samples but you can program your own sound effects to um be recalled on those samples as well from uh, from audio files that you've made. So that covers the GoXLR mic setup from start to finish. Using those settings or starting with those settings will give you a nice area to kind of work and fiddle with to find your own perfect setup. Like I said before, everybody's setup is gonna be a little bit different. Everybody's room is gonna have different levels of background noise. So you're gonna have to fine tune those settings to really match yourself. But hopefully this gives you a good starting place. If you would like me to go into more detail or do more videos on the GoXLR, be sure to leave a comment down below. Um, we could go into lighting or the mixer, setting up the effects panel, things like that. If you guys feel like you need that help, I'm um, usually balancing the mic is the most complicated thing that most people don't understand. So I figured we'd start with that and then see where it goes from there. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you found this helpful. I hope that you learned something um, about the GoXLR, about your mic. I do recommend this piece of software I would, this was not sponsored by GoXLR or anything like that but i do feel this is a very solid product and fills a niche in streaming and youtubing that hasn't been met before a lot of features crammed into one device is very very easy to set up and basically does everything you could want from a mixer designed for the streamer or youtuber in mind um, i think it's a great piece of hardware i think you'll be very happy with your purchase and hopefully this helps you get it set up and working if you did find this helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. As always, be good to yourselves, and I'll catch you next time.